Everybody, this channel is called Ham Radio Dude, and we're here to learn about ham radios today. We're here to take a look at the Xtena NFED half wave and talk about why it's a little bit unique or a little bit different than most NFED half waves that you see on the market. Fair warning, because there's some people who will get triggered. This was sent to me by Xtena for the purpose of a review or evaluation. In fact, they said if you don't want to review or evaluate it, just give it away. So at the end of the episode, I will announce who the Xtena and Fed Half Wave uh, was the winner of, and I've already kind of talked about all that stuff in the last episode. So let's talk about this Xtena and Fed Half Wave. The things I like, the unique portions of this thing, the things that are uh, maybe need a little bit of improvement, and I'll talk along the way about my observations while using this over the past two weeks, including traveling as well as just using it around the house. Let's jump into things. Only one camera today, so here's how we're gonna do it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, this is the angle you get, okay? And um, I would love to hear your feedback at sadhams.com. Here we are. Uh, this is the Xtena and Fed Half Wave, and I did mention that there's something that's very unique about this, okay? Now, when I received the kit from Xtena for the purpose of a review and an evaluation, I got the, what would I think would be called the Pro Kit, which includes a wire winder and 71 feet of wire. So before I actually take a look at this right here, let me go ahead and explain the wire winder, some of the problems that I had with it, and I did reach out to the owner of the company before making this video, and I informed him that I believe this will be a problem. Uh, this is the wire winder that came with the Pro Kit. Now, if you can tell, it's fairly warped. Now, what causes this to warp? Well, this is 3D printed, and this is printed in what would be called PLA. It doesn't matter if it's PLA plus, PLA tough, PLA whatever. If it's mainly PLA, it's gonna warp under uh, temperature conditions. In fact, uh, PLA could warp in 30 to 7 degree weather if it's in a window seal, for example. This one is just how I, I received it when I received the antenna, meaning as it sit in the mailbox, it probably warped because the mailbox is warm um, or the mail truck. Regardless, uh, I did reach out to them and I said, hey, maybe you want to consider printing these in the future in PETG. After all, you as a consumer, when you purchase a product, you want to make sure that you're going to have a product that is, well, as it should be. So nothing ne necessarily uh, wrong with it, but I do want to point out that this was one thing that had happened that I, I necessarily wasn't so sure of. But also with the kit comes 71 feet of wire. This is the wire that comes with it. This is a very thin, maybe 30 gauge. I would be able to check on the website, but it's very thin wire. And uh, it's kind of like poly stealth, I guess, in a way, but it's all copper as well. And I'm doing my best to give you uh, a demonstration of what it looks like. Uh, but what I could tell you is this, it's very strong wire. Okay, I don't know if you could see my knuckles getting white there as I'm pulling, but that's because it's strong wire and it's not gonna break, okay? I'm tough on things so other people don't have to be. Uh, however, you could break this with a knife or with a scissors. Now, let me just give you a comparison. I'm building an NFED half wave right now using BN Tech Go wire and, well, here, let me just show you real quick, okay? Um, yeah, I, there's a thousand ways I could have broke it, but I was just trying to look cool. Um, anyway, BN Tech Go stretches, and it's actually more silver internally, but it's, I don't know, it's cheap. I like the wire. It's good because it doesn't have a memory. However, after using this for just a couple of weeks, I see that uh, there is a nice use for a strong, durable wire that doesn't break when you hang it up, if you hang it up permanently. And then we put, or go to this here. This is the wire winder, the auto transformer. We'll call this the main unit. And this isn't meant to stay outdoors permanently, but I talked about that wire. Um, this is not meant to be outdoors permanently. This is more of a portable operation thing. Look at this, it's pretty small, right? Let's measure it. Call it six and a half or seven inches in length, okay? By three and three quarters wide. And then height wise, I don't know, it's pretty short, right? Less than an inch in height or just at an inch in height. And I show that to you just to kind of prove that it's compact. Now this is a f auto transformer that is wrapped kind of uniquely. And that's kind of the point of this whole uh, Xtena. Now you might be saying, isn't this a packed henna? And uh, it kind of looks like one, but uh, there's this switch here. And I don't think that packed henna has a switch. This will go from a 49 to one, and you can switch it to a 56 to one auto transformer or a 64 to one auto transformer. 
During my time testing and in my experience, this is nice for multiple reasons. If I had a antenna that was horizontal and 20 feet off the ground, and then I made it so it was in a sloper configuration, the standing wave ratios might vary slightly. And I say slightly, that's the key word, okay? If they vary slightly though, maybe your standing wave ratio goes higher than two to one and you don't wanna operate there. Well, this is kind of where this little switch might come in handy. So you could switch it from say like a 49 to one to 56 to one or backwards actually. You could experiment with this to see if your standing wave ratio goes lower or higher uh, based upon the winding. And that actually kind of does become useful. In my experience, I'd have something like a 1.8 to one standing wave ratio and I would use the switch and I can get down to 1.4 to one standing wave ratio. Is it a huge difference? No, but could it make a difference? Yes. So keep that in mind. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, actually three things I want to point out. I really appreciate how the antenna actually works on this here. So for example, right here you have the antenna in, right? And you use a bullet connector, but also there's a spot here for strain relief. Let me show you. Now you're probably asking yourself, why does strain relief matter? Well, because it's nice to not have the antenna wire pull out, right? I know, leave a comment below. <laughs> anyway, here it is, right? Boom. And now all of a sudden, this portion of the wire is not moving no matter how much, you know, movement this part of the wire has, and that's nice. But there's actually something else nobody ever talks about, I don't think. There's actually three spots to hook up your antenna wire here. And the story goes like this. I had a bullet connector on here. Maybe not this one exactly, but I had a bullet connector on here. And I put it into here, the bullet connector and the wire, and when I was operating parks on the air. And I didn't have the strain relief on here. And wouldn't you know it, the actual wire separated from the bullet connector. So here I am at parks on the air, my parks on the air failure uh, because of the flood, but uh, I was about to, to not be able to operate anymore at all because I lost the end piece here. And I quickly realized that I could either just have this stripped away on the wire a little bit, and I could just put it into where the bullet connector would go as long as I had the strain relief on here. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. So I put that in there. And I was able to finish my parks on the air activation until, you know, the weather and the storms took over. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out and that'll make more sense. But anyway, another thing I kind of wanted to point out, maybe for some reason you can't get it to fit in here. And, uh, or maybe you don't want to use a bullet connector. You think bullet connectors are stupid. And uh, after you wind your wire and then unwind it, by the way, Maybe you just want to solder this onto the antenna port. Not only is this bullet connector an antenna port, there we go, but this little uh, pad is also an antenna port. But wait, this is also an antenna port or a connector port, if you will. And I tell you that because there's actually three ways you could hook an antenna up, which is actually a very good uh, redundancy, like a backup thing in case one of them fails or something happens, right? Hey, while I'm watching this video, and I recognize I'm going fast, I hope you could follow me, but uh, with that antenna portion right here, that circular one, you could get a screw that'll go through here and then a wing nut or a lock washer and a wing nut to be able to then use a spade connector on your antenna wire. So again, you have your strain relief over to the wing nut. Just three different ways that you could install your antenna. Phenomenal, phenomenal. I love that. So I really appreciate that and the strain relief is great as well. Now the switch we talked about, so let's kind of move over here. This takes a BNC connector. And what I ended up doing is I was using, for example, uh, yesterday, a, a Yezu FT891. So I just had a BNC female that went to an SL239 connector and the SL239 went into the back of the radio. Uh, you could use adapters and all that good jazz. I didn't have any kind of problems with this piece here and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was easy to hook up. Uh, in the future, maybe there'll be an SL239 model available, but I, I don't know. And I don't even know if that's necessary at this point. I do want to mention though that uh, there's also this counterpoise part. And much like the antenna portion, there's spots for two counterpoises, or rather there's two spots for a counterpoise. I call it redundancy again. Real quick, uh, before I talk about my experience actually using this antenna, uh, I want to, let's go ahead and open it up. I'm very curious to see what's inside. Now, if you've never used a switchable antenna before, it's not necessarily a new concept. Uh, you can go to Thingiverse and you can find files to print your own case and everything. 
Uh, but basically what's gonna happen is this switch is tapped into multiple spots on the windings to create either the 49 to one, 56 to one, or 64 to one. But also with that, <laughs> Let's talk about operating real quick. Uh, I don't know if you see that white on my thumb. That's called RF burn, I think. Um, it hurt. But it, basically what was happening is as I was keying up, I had this on a picnic bench and I was transmitting and I thought I could hit this switch while keying up to demonstrate the standing wave ratio, right? And seeing how it shifts. But I do want to make it a point that that's RF. So if you touch this little uh, pad here, I mean, you're technically part of the antenna at that point. Uh, but also like even this little switch here, if you hit that outer shield, I think that I got shocked off of that as well, unless I was touching like, you know, one of these other antenna ports. But I just let you know that because I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I did. It's in there. I promise you it's there. It's there. <laughs> anyway, so let's go ahead and just kind of cut this open here and take a look at what's inside. I will tell you that the toroids a T140-43 as per the uh, as per the Etsy page or the Extena website where they sell these. And a T14043 is technically for sideband rated at 60 watts. And I think that's a generous number. You could probably put 100 watts through it if you're doing parks on the air and you're making quick contacts. But um, to be safe, and I did run it at 100 watts a couple of times. To be safe, I did follow the 60 watts output for voice. And when I was running FT8 or digital modes, I had it down at about 30 to 35 watts, depending. And uh, the toroid at 35 watts got warm, which means we're gonna reach you know, curry point or saturation point. So I just brought it down to 30 watts. I was still making contacts around the world. Let's find a knife. I wanna thank uh, Kate MRD for this one right here. Uh, thank you, Mike, appreciate it. And again, people want things built sometimes they don't quite feel competent yet building their own, or they're just in a position where it's easier to, you know, have it done for them. I'm not one to judge, and I'm sure we'll hear about it in the comments. There is the toroid, and as you can see, it's kind of wrapped with not magnet wire, but that's fine, it's still wire. And you're gonna notice that the switch is here. If we flip it over, we'll get a better idea of what's going on here. You have this three position switch, which is really cool, right? And uh, if you're on 64 to one, that means that there's, uh, let's see, 16 windings. So there's two primaries and then I think 16 secondaries if I'm doing that math right real quick. Regardless, uh, 16 divided by two is eight. Eight times eight is 64, so 64 to one. If you switch it, that's basically the whole wrapping. If you switch it over to 56 to one, it would be like, oh, 15 divided by two would be 7.5 somewhere around 15 turns or the next turn. And then finally, if you went to 49 to one, that would be, uh, let's see, 14 turns, okay? So basically every time you switch this, uh, you're basically either eliminating one of the windings or you're adding a winding, adding a winding. And I think it's kind of cool for you to know this stuff, right? And what happens when you add the windings, the impedance values change and therefore uh, your antenna becomes electrically longer or shorter, I believe would be the correct way to say it. Regardless, I think that's pretty cool to have a switch there. It would be neat to see uh, like a, I don't know if it's possible because of the way a nine to one is done, but if you could do like a 49 to one and then a switch to a nine to one, that would be cool. It, even if you had to do like a T14043 over here and uh, you know a different toroid here with a different winding but still i think that would be cool to have a random wire antenna switch it and then have the 49 to 1 n fed half wave there's a use for that by the way and uh you do have your capacitor here looks like they're using a uh, three kilovolt capacitor no problems there this is a standard n fed half wave what else is there to say about it well not too much let's talk about how it operated i guess i gotta bring this back up here and be like yeah <laughs> oh wait, all right, all right. Well, you talk a lot. Everything I, everything you do bothers me. <laughs> Welcome to the internet, my friend. Um, let's talk though about uh, how did this thing perform? I did use this on FT8 and I used this on voice. I tried to use it doing a parks on the air activation with the antenna being only about eight feet off the ground at the high point, two feet off the ground at the low point. Uh, but I did also use multiple configurations to include 25 feet off the ground horizontally, 25 feet off the ground in the sloper configuration using the Giga Dude, the new carbon fiber mast if you haven't heard about it. And uh, I hadn't had any problems. I thought this was a good performing antenna to be completely frank. I like the fact that it had the strain release. It has the switch, it's unique. 
There once was somebody on the internet who said, uh, it doesn't matter which NFED half wave you get, they're all the same. And this would be a little bit different, right? Um, so, you know, maybe you consider that. The cool thing about that is, is it gives you the opportunity to kind of explore and to kind of, what's the word? See what works best for you, experiment, that's the word. And uh, I could appreciate that. So even though I did have a couple of kind of minor complaints about this thing, uh, overall, I would say that I like the wire. I appreciate the wrapping. I think this comes in at about 65 US dollars. Now, let me throw it out there. There's certain NFED half wave kits that are out there. I'm not gonna name any names, but uh, we all know you know, that there's kits out there that are about 65 bucks and they come with everything, but it's in a kit and you have to build it. And if that's your thing, great. This NFED half wave kit is about $65. It looks like it comes with all the wires. Let me check and double check that real quick. Okay, yeah, so this whole stealth black package, uh, you know, the red antenna, the black winder, the black wire. Um, also, it does come with a, a little clip for the end of the wire. I, mine's in my bag at the moment, so I, I apologize that I didn't show that off. But um, yeah, so $65 fully assembled, and that includes free shipping, because it's free shipping over $35. So if you're looking for an antenna where you could just kind of like start using it and it gives you more options, being that 49 to one, that 56 to one or 64 to one, maybe maybe this is for you. Uh, this would be great for somebody out there doing parks on the air activations. I used it while I was traveling on an airplane. It was very lightweight, very small, fit in my bag. I was happy, good to go. This may not be for somebody who's looking for a permanent, always outdoor solution. And I'm just letting you know that, uh, yeah, even with you know some heat shrink on here, this ends up being uh, susceptible to water. And when water hits this area here, uh, it could throw off values, but also permanent damage may be done, especially if something was maybe short out, I don't know. I really like the concept of the PCB. I like the concept, uh, how it's made as far as that goes. And uh, I really do think it would be cool to see an SL239, but there could be reasons again for that not to work. Hi, editing me again here. I wanted to point out the bands, okay? So if you have a 40 meter NFED half wave or you use that correct length of wire for a 40 meter NFED half wave, you'll still get 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters. Hitting the switch most likely, won't give you any extra bands, but it is fun to play with and see what you could do. But what it might do for you is maybe you will use that little switch and your standing wave ratio is higher or lower on portions of the band. It's really nice to hit that switch and maybe lower your standing wave ratio for the portion of that band, if that makes sense. So I wanted to mention that, but also I need to talk about the winner of the NFED half wave. Not this one, because I opened this one, but I purchased an NFED half wave and it's already been sent out. Congratulations to November 3, Juliet Whiskey. I have sent a NFED half wave to your home. Okay, actually, I don't see any questions of things that I don't think I already or didn't answer. So yeah, if I missed your question, my apologies, but I did go through a good portion of these comments and I don't really see anything I haven't answered. Looks like it would be good with the 6100, absolutely. Uh, I'm quite interested in seeing the full review. I, I do hope that this was good enough for you. And uh, just keep in mind that this is a nice portable auto transformer that allows you multiple uh, windings, if you will. That's something, again, that's not heard of. But uh, yeah, this all looks like I've answered the questions. Thank you all for the comments. And until next time, don't forget to hit like, all that blah, blah, blah jazz. But more importantly, I just hope you get out there, have fun on the radio. This was Ham Radio Dude. A little bit random of an episode, I know. And I'm going to hear about it. Don't be sad, though. Allow us to express our creative ability. <laughs> hope you have a good one. 73. Picking my nose now.